but I'm with the New York Digital Assembly, oh. um, Suffolk County. Yeah. You helped my sons. Um, okay. I, I, our meeting is taking place right now, which is why I'm never on your calls. Oh, tonight, we're, we're competing said, with each other. Ah, I said tonight, <laughs> I told the president I'm on. I, I just want to listen. Oh. Um, I'm dying to talk to you again. But so forgive me if I'm not up to speed with exactly what you're you're discussing tonight. Um, you and I had spoken about because my house, I still didn't go to an attorney to do a trust or to, to even put back put it in my name. I inherited it from my dad and his will. And it's just been in limbo for four years because I can't bring myself to go to an attorney and put it in a trust, especially after speaking with you and listening to you. And But um, today I was back to something else and I wanted to ask you your thoughts. Um, if you have any, I know LLC is a way to go, putting a house in an LLC. Um, I don't know enough about that. I'd like to speak more with you about that. But also, are you familiar at all with land patents? Is that a scheme? Is that a, or is, I mean, I, I, it looks legit. I don't know if you're familiar I, with that. I've heard all kinds of stories on land patents. I understand what that is. You're just updating the uh, property rights on a piece of land. And I believe that you would include water rights and mineral rights. Mm -hmm. I think you don't yep. always have to, but you're going to go to the Bureau of Land Management to do that. And from what I understand, the whole idea is that you would, in a feudal economy, you would have an allodial title. Right. But I don't think that you do. I, 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 I've I, heard different stories, and I'm not sure that I can verify that anyone has ever successfully done that. And I really think that we have to face the fact that we are in a feudal society. It's it's just going to be that way. It's such a big thing that we're in. I don't know. I can't even imagine not being, I, you know, there's some problems with it, but we can operate in it. But, Are you, have you, you ever know. heard of Ron Gibson, the gentleman that does that? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a list of people that, uh, that do land patents, but I mean, it sounds really cool, right? It's one of those things that sound really cool. I would ask, I always ask when people say to me, did you hear about this? And I always ask, okay, so that sounds cool. What risk are you trying to manage by updating the land patent? What are you trying I, to do? I thought it eliminates property taxes. I don't because know. Because you actually That's own That's what I've property. heard. I don't know that I can say someone's done that. According to him, he does it all the time, but I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't think that, that land is is recognized as having the, the owner of the land in fee simple. I mean, the definition of fee simple, that's how we own land today. But how is that how is that a private property right? It's not. You're well, getting permission. So how do you actually have private property rights if you're getting permission? Permission from whom? The government. The government when, is when you the get the land is listing the property as yours, giving you the exclusive right to sell it. But is it yours then? No, you just have um, the exclusive no, right to sell it. I think what well, I I was reading a lot today, but so what I'm understanding is it's yours and it goes in your family forever and ever. It is yours forever. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody can infringe on you. They can't. When you're the fact that when you buy your house, you're buying real estate, you're not buying land. You only owned every own everything above the land, not which is the house, the shed, the barn, the, the fence, the whatever, but not the land. I so think you'll find this in Blackstones. The thing is, we, we have fee simple. That's it. That's all that's recognized. The statute is recognized because we're using the statute to represent our ownership, our exclusive right to sell the property. We're stuck in that system. So so here's how you would get what you're talking about. Land patents. Let's just say this, this idea that it's unencumbered, okay? I think the only way to do that is to export the land to a different jurisdiction. How do you do that? You have to file a quick claim deed okay. and it over to a different property description other than the taxable one. The same with a vehicle. You can actually get your car out of the vehicle registration mm -hmm. system by exporting it to a foreign jurisdiction. I'm not saying Canada. I'm saying a jurisdiction that the your current jurisdiction cannot work through to tax it. Hmm. I never even heard that before. Because again, we're in a feudal society, so you're not going to get out of it. It's like this cage that it's so big, you can't even mm -hmm. scale the walls. So 
other yeah. than using the existing mechanism within that society to export it out of that society. And how do you do that with real estate? You have to redescribe it because it ain't going anywhere. It's a moti, like they say in Europe. It's a moti. I mean, it's immovable. Uh -huh. right? It's immovable. So you'd so have to export by redescribing it in a jurisdiction like real estate. And you know, you guys know, okay, legal description is a taxable description. The legal description, the survey with meets and bounds is not. Mm -hmm. Right. If you'll notice. Right. Look at your property appraiser's website and your listing and all that. It has it operates on legal descriptions because it's viewed only as real estate, not private property. Right, right. So our private property rights are being ignored. So how do you deal with that? Well, my my rudimentary way of dealing with it is just be the last lien holder. <laughs> you know, that's where you use the HOA covenant. And then be the one in possession on a settled matter of the land. And you do that with an easement. One or the other, or both. You can do both. Always have the last word on the title and always have possession of the property as a settled matter of public record. And then whoever has the title is irrelevant. I'm so, that confuses me so much. Let me, everything... let me walk you through a foreclosure. So someone's house gets foreclosed upon. What's actually happening? The title is being taken. Mm -hmm. Not possession. So a foreclosure is two parts. The first one is take title. And the second one is take possession. No one ever talks about the application for writ of ejectment or writ of possession in the court that follows a judicial foreclosure or even a non-judicial foreclosure. There's still that writ of possession aspect of it. And I know full well because when I took all those foreclosure cases and my client needed to stay in the home a bit longer, a lot of times I could extend it six months to a year by fighting the application for possession. I would always lose but I could delay it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I have the lien rights over the use of the land and they want to, they want to take possession, the court can still issue a writ of possession against the title holder that had the property before it was foreclosed upon. Mm -hmm. And, but the court will not dispossess the easement holder. So if the easement holder, the grantee, the servant estate, if the grantee of the easement holder leases the property to someone else, maybe it's the former title holder, that would, you couldn't encumber that. You couldn't dispossess that person because he has a valid lease agreement that is now held by the easement holder, not the title holder. We just conveyed the rights that he had as a title holder over to this easement over here, and it's not subject to foreclosure. So uh -huh. now your lease agreement is under the servant estate and not under the dominant estate. Okay. Well, you just knocked my land patent idea. I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, okay, land patent. I mean, I'm not, I, I, it's, it's kind of cool to do that because it, now you get yep. to look at the history and all, and all this, but I don't think that that's a solution. I think it's, I think there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't think it's recognized in a feudal society, the one we live in right now. I'm not familiar with that term. So I have to learn what you mean by that. Feudal Feudalism? Mm-hmm. Well, feudalism I, just simply means that the king owns everything and you lease it back. Uh, okay. I yeah. that I am familiar with that. All right. And so back when if you go back to like twelve fifteen or something when you when you when you heard about the Magna Carta, uh huh. Think about this. Okay. I, I haven't read it in a while, but Magna Carta. That means the big letter. Okay. It was an important change in world commerce, okay? And so here's what happened. Here's my take on it. <laughs> I'll get to that, Matt, in a second. Uh here's what happened. The corporation said to the kings of the world, you're not in control anymore. We are. We run things around here. If you want money, you got to get it from us. And they have been doing that ever since. Jeez. Over 800 years. Okay.